we want to do a couple of things, right? We want to make sure Windows 10 is running smoothly. We also want to make sure that our data, we can retrieve it with high performance. And we also want to make sure that the data is what's called durable. We're not going to lose any data and we can care for it properly. Let's take a look at how to do that with some really cool advanced storage techniques in this nugget. This is one of our hands-on lab nuggets, so if you'd like to follow along, go for it. Just go ahead and get logged in to client one nug as I am doing. And we're going to drop the password in. We're going to log in as our Power T user account. Remember, this is a domain user account, but that's not all that super relevant for what we're about to do on this local system. The first thing I wanted to show you as far as storage goes is in settings. So let's check that out. We're going to go into settings and let me maximize this window so we can see our options here. And under system, you're going to notice there is this storage category. And no, notice that there's something called storage sense that can be used. This is Windows automatically freeing up space to get rid of files for us, like temp files and recycle bin content that we would ordinarily have to get rid of ourselves. Now, I am not a big fan of this. As you know, I like to manually clean the drive on a schedule that I like. But one thing I wanted to show you in here is this option of change where new content is saved. This is pretty slick. Notice when we have new documents or new apps or new music, we can dictate where those are going to be stored. And notice the defaults would be probably the last place you'd want to do all of that. You see, a great strategy you can do with your Windows 10 system is to keep the system files, Windows itself, installed on the C drive and then have another drive like a D, standing for data drive, for all of your stuff. This is an excellent strategy. So this feature, changing where new content is saved, could really help us go a long way towards making sure we partition the Windows stuff from the C drive separate from our data storage. But what I wanted to spend the most time with you in this nugget doing, and the most impressive feature is right here, it's called storage spaces. This is incredibly cool. This allows you to take a whole bunch of drives, they can be of all different sizes, shapes, varieties, and pool them all together to create one high performance storage pool. Watch this. We'll choose create a new pool. We'll say, yes, we want the uh, you know system to be able to do this. And look what I've done for you. I took five different disk drives and attached them to this virtual machine. They're not initialized. They're not formatted, but storage spaces seize them. They're each five gig in size, just because I didn't want to waste a lot of space with this demonstration, but you get the idea. And notice some are SAS, some are ATA drives connected via IDE or SCSI. So there can be variety in these drives. And I'm going to have all five of these selected and I'm going to say create pool. The next decision is what we're going to name it. I'll just call mine like, how about my storage space? And then what drive letter we want. So let's make this the Z drive. What file system, there's a resilient file system or NTFS. The resilient file system is pretty exciting. That is to give increased resiliency guarding against failures. And then we can set up the resiliency type. We could do no resiliency for just high performance, or we could do a two-way mirror, a three-way mirror, or we could do what's called parity, where we're going to get great performance because the data is going to be written across all five of these disks, but there's also going to be parity information written in case we lose a drive. We won't lose any data when we lose one of these drives. Truly remarkable. Then we can do something really clever. I can go in and say, hey, look, this is 12 terabytes worth of space. Now, in all actuality, I think Windows 10 would have a little bit of a problem addressing 12 terabytes. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and just go for one terabyte. So we'll choose create storage space. Remember, this is well above the actual physical space that we've got available. And there we go. We just created 
our storage space. And look at this. It's already saying, hey, uh, you know what? You better add some more space if you want people to have a terabyte because you're already running fairly low. But you get the idea. This is so cool. So what happens here now is we have this Z drive and this is made up of that pool of different hard disks and we have the resiliency in case we lose a hard disk we won't lose data we got some increased performance this is really awesome now you can do stuff like take the documents and redirect those so i'm going to go into the system documents folder that they set up for us and i'm going to go to the location tab and i'm going to say wait a minute here we want to move this documents folder because we've got a nice z drive that we have set up that has great resiliency and that's where we want to set this it says do you want to move all the files to that new location i would say yes and now our documents is tucked over on that storage space Z drive. Remember, this hands-on lab is here for you anytime you need it. If you want to go and run through creating different storage spaces with those five drives I gave you, you can uh, definitely experiment with that. There's many different types to create as we saw. I hope this nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.